Dead Pit fans are uh, familiar with this gentleman here. You've done, uh, you, you, you've heard him, but now we're going to bring you the visual. It's Mr. Lou Perryman, of course, uh, world famous as LG Peters in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, uh, builder of the Fry Shack, and unfortunately uh, meets a terrible, terrible demise at the hands of Leatherface. How you doing today? Doing fine, doing fine. Happy to be here. He didn't really die, of course. Well, you know, that was one thing that, uh, you know, LG was just, he was pretty much, uh, he, he, he took a licking and kept on ticking. And I would certainly think that, uh, you know, maybe there's a possibility he can come back with some reconstructive surgery if they, uh, if they choose to do that. True love knows no limits. You know, this girl is, is defenseless. He's got, to, he's got to fully save the girl. Just save the girl. Like John Houston said in Chinatown, he said, just find the girl, Mr. Gitz. Well, you know, LG certainly was dedicated to Stretch, and uh, I think I think everybody that watched the movie was kind of pulling for the two of them to, to hook up. Uh, but unfortunately, that that didn't happen. At least in at least in part two. Who knows? Maybe later on down the line. Well, uh, first time here uh, in uh, Dallas for a convention, or you do this pretty regularly? First time for the Fear Fest. I missed last year. Got sick. Um, did a Frightmare weekend here uh, a year or two ago. And I've been to some other conventions, Chiller and Cinema Wasteland, and really enjoyed those. Been to Cinema Wasteland twice and Chiller once, okay. so that's been a lot of fun. Well, do you, uh, do you, I'm sure probably uh, people see you on the street, people see you coming in the hotel. A lot of the, a lot of the guests here that have been in horror movies, of course, have the, uh, have the advantage of being masked or in heavy prosthetics. Do you, do you get stopped a lot? Hey, you're, uh, you're LG. I do, I do here. I do. Yeah, at a convention I do, uh, rarely anywhere else, uh, but but here uh, it's amazing. My first show was Cinema Wasteland, and it just blew my mind it, just to see how many people had, had got on to LG and, and liked Chainsaw 2, and I had pretty much forgotten all that and just didn't know all this was going on. I didn't know these shows were going on, and so it's just been a, an absolute hoot to come here. And one last question. We won't take up too much of your time, but the uh, the prosthetics for the uh, for the skinned LG. I mean, how uncomfortable a I can imagine to have to walk around on a set in your boxer shorts, but to have your skin on your chest, down your leg, all over your face missing. Uh, how long was that process to get you into that makeup, and how uncomfortable actually was it? Uh, it wasn't that uncomfortable wearing it. It was uh, there was some element of uh, be gentle with it and delicate with it, but. But it, it fit. It was form fit. They cast my body, so it fit me. And, you know, and, uh, and so they built a slant board where I went to lay down about 2 o'clock in the morning. And, um, and I went to sleep just like I was supposed to. And I woke up, you know. I guess I just went ahead and got in my boxer shorts. And, uh, go, and go, to sleep, go to sleep normal. You wake up skinned. And I wake up skinned. And then in rush hour traffic in Austin... We're driving across town, and I'm waving at the people in the next cars. And now that that uh, that layer, I guess, that was built in the old Austin American Statesman building, wasn't it? Uh, it newspaper. Was. It was all full of ink that sprayed, and full of offices. So the studio, the radio station was there. Yeah. The exterior was another little building, just really 100 yards away, yeah. in in a very undeveloped old Austin. Uh, so a lot of people really enjoy seeing the movie just for that reason, yeah. just to see old Austin. But I was on the table for about seven hours, mm. six, seven hours, and then I couldn't stop and I couldn't eat. Yeah. And so they only did it once, so we had to shoot me out then. Okay. So I finished up late that night. So after the makeup, I probably then put in another 12 to 16 hours. Well, anything else on the horizon? Any uh, websites you want to promote? Any uh, any more conventions you're going to be going to this year? You can tell the folks about who may not be uh, be near us today. Uh, well, I'm getting I'm getting ready to go to Crypticon in um, in Seattle in May, and um, you know, back when I first got started as an actor, uh, there was a bunch of us: Eagle Pinnell, Sonny Davis, and myself uh, started doing some movies. Did a short called A Hell of a Note and our first feature called The Whole Shooting Match. And it pretty much, those pretty much got lost. And Eagle, unfortunately, drank himself to death. Away, yeah. and, um, and so we're being restoring The Whole Shooting Match. Okay. 
And uh, it's, I, I have really a friend who is a big fan of that. I personally have never seen it. I'd like to see that. Oh, it's a good movie. You'd like it. It's a good movie. It's got a good heart. And it's being restored in high definition. And Sonny just moved back from L.A. So we're talking about waking up these two characters. I played a guy named Lloyd, and he played Frank. And uh, put them on video and put them on the Internet. Oh, okay. So we're talking about, we don't have a title yet, maybe uh, Living the Dream, yeah. maybe Frank and Lloyd, maybe Lloyd and Frank. We like to argue about that. Nah, yeah. Lloyd and Frank, no. Nah, you know, but we're, we're trying to get something going on that. We're going to shoot something in April and see how it goes. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, uh, like I said before, you got to hear him. We let you see him. Lou Perryman, thank you so much for taking time with us today. Thank you you have a great weekend. Thank, thank you. you.